As you well know, we love hearing about people who are making a difference where they live. Rob from Canesham, otherwise known as Yoga Dad, is hosting summer holiday stretch classes online to raise money for a range of local charities. Let's find out more uh, from the man himself. Rob joins me, Yoga Dad, same person. Morning to you, Rob. Hi, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm very well. Very well. Well done to you for putting these sessions on. They're obviously popular. They are, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I ran um, a series of classes um, back around May time, around Mental Health Awareness Week. Um, it was like morning stretch sessions, 15 minutes, and um, and they proved really popular as well. In fact, I was on with John around the time talking about those classes and over the past couple of months or so, I've just kind of been thinking about doing something um, as a follow-on from that. Summer holidays came around, the boys have just gone back to nursery, I've got a bit more time on my hands. And I thought, actually, the great thing to do this time is to link it into local charities and not only offer people the opportunity to prioritise health and well-being for themselves, but also raise awareness and raise money for some amazing charities that have been at the front line of the COVID response over the past few months. Ah, bravo you. We'll talk about the charities in a moment, but there's a double whammy here, isn't there? There's the physical well-being of doing the exercise, and there's the kind of mental health boost of knowing you're doing something to, to get yourself in, in, in better condition. Definitely, definitely. And when you think about the fact the government put out its anti-obesity strategy yesterday, and, you know, there's so much of a focus now on healthy living and getting ourselves moving again. You look at all the active travel things that have come out this morning as well around cycling and walking. It's finding an activity that really works and resonates to you. So it might not necessarily be about, you know, getting on a bike and, and, and getting around the city and that kind of thing. It can be as easy as actually just sitting down on a chair as I do, running these sessions on Facebook Live for 15 minutes and just getting people to take some time out for themselves and really really feeling proud about the fact they're actually prioritising their health and well-being and hopefully encouraging others to do the same. Yeah, so logistically, how does it work? I mean, they get onto the Facebook link, obviously. Um, yeah. They see you and they just follow your kind of, your exercise yeah. routine? Yeah, that's it. So I, generally, I've been running the sessions actually in my boys' bedroom. So I've got twin boys, they're yoga twins. And um, it's live <laughs> and direct from their room on their Facebook Live. So I'm surrounded by cuddly toys and children's books and that kind of thing. And as much as anything, what I'm trying to prove is that you can do this kind of thing anywhere. It doesn't need yeah. to be in a yoga studio or gym, that kind of thing. You can take it into your own home. This morning's session, actually, I ran outdoors in the garden. Bird song, blue skies, stark contrast to yesterday when it was obviously pretty horrible. And, um, you know, a creaky old garden chair as well that was used in this time around. And, um, and so, yeah, so it's, um, they log on to Facebook Live. They can, they can see me from 8.30 in the morning to 8.45. Plus, I'm also recording the sessions. So they're available anytime on my Yoga Dad Facebook page. So if anyone wants to do it, not just in the morning, they can do it whenever. Yep. And um, I'm also saving them onto YouTube as well, my Yoga Dad channel too. So if people yeah. don't use Facebook, they can access the classes on YouTube. That is one of the few positives of, of COVID-19 is, is, is the ability to do things remotely and things we never even thought of doing previously we're now doing like you're doing this and it's available on demand and yeah. beforehand you'd have had to do you'd have done your sessions and you'd have done it in the same room as your pupils whereas now you can do it with yeah. someone who might be in the other the other side of the world absolutely and uh, you know i have a, a global reach in a lot of respects with what i do in terms of some of the classes and the blog writing i do through my website and um, as much as still, I'm really plugged into my local community. So up until the lockdown, I, I was running yoga for men classes um, in, in Kingsham at our local Baptist church. And um, lots of men of all ages and ability levels, sizes, that type of thing, come into the classes. And so what I'm really trying to do is kind of break some of those stereotypes around you know, what yoga means to people, who can practice it, and, and just getting people involved in an activity that really you know, works for them and they see some significant benefits from. Yeah, what are the benefits of yoga then, Rob? So some of the benefits, I mean, from from a physical perspective, I think you can just, I mean, generally a lot of the guys that come to me are about increasing flexibility. Um, so generally they feel, you know, maybe they're able to touch their toes and that type of thing. But also that ability just to kind of understand more about the way in which your body feels and the sensations you experience and being more tuned into that and, and you know, um, moving in a way, I suppose, that feels beneficial to you and safe to you, but also then using your breath 
as a kind of link between the body and the way it moves and also the way in which you think. So kind of enabling you to feel more calm, I suppose, and more focused when you're doing different activities, whatever it is in the day, and, and just don't really having that kind of whole sense, I suppose, of how the body and mind and the breath kind of link together and, um, and, you know, that framing around, I suppose, physical and mental health and well-being. Yeah, beautifully explained. Um, the charities who are benefiting from, from your sessions, j- just tell me yeah. a little bit more about who, who you're supporting. So we've got HUK Bristol, um, who actually were on, I think, with Ali a week or so ago, their CEO, talking about the plight that they're currently facing around reaching out to older people and you know the, the shortfall in funding that they've seen from uh, donations over the past few months. Um, we've also got St Mungo's, who are for lost sleepers. Um, we've got Julian House on domestic abuse. Um, Suicide Prevention Bristol, who, again, put out an emergency appeal over the last few days or so around you know, more donations for the equipment that they need for their emergency, emergency response services. And we've got Off the Record as well. And... Um, and they're around young people's mental health. Um, so generally what I've tried to do is pick the charities that weren't the obvious ones around the NHS, say, um, but equally are you know, desperately short of funding because of such a um, you know, reduction in terms of their donations that they've been receiving to their charities, while at the same time they've potentially seen a real spike in the services, um, you know, the, the need for their services over the past few months. So it's about shining a light on those charities and as much as anything, raising as much money as possible for these charities to be able to still deliver their services over, you know, the rest of this pan- pandemic and, the, and, and beyond. Awesome stuff, Rob. Bravo to you. Lovely to chat with you this morning. Keep up the great work.